Next case comes for the court of Johnson versus Kowalski. Uh, Stephen Hannibal, I represent the appellant uh, Lawrence Pierkowski. Um, this concerns the granting of an extension of a civil protection order or the or the granting of a second civil protection order. The first one was set to expire uh, in October 2014 and on the expiration date the petitioner um, filed went to the Medina County Domestic Relations Court and filed for another one asserting that she you know, she was fearful of my client, Mr. Pierkowski. And the hearing was held in the following month, and in that hearing, uh, Ms. Johnson presented absolutely no evidence that she was under any fear of imminent serious physical harm, none whatsoever. Um, you know, there were no violations of the prior order that went, you know, that went for, for the full five-year term. Um, she asserted her basis of fear on the fact that my client challenged the, the merits and the validity of the first civil protection order um, several times. You know, we tried to appeal, which, you know, that didn't work out because uh, this court ended up uh, denying it on a technicality. And then he also later tried to do a 60B motion to introduce new evidence to show that the civil protection order was premised upon, uh, you know, uh, false information. And then he also later, um, sued her in civil court to recover $50,000 that she took as a result of him being kicked out of the house by the civil protection order. He had $50,000 in cash in the home. And it's on those, it's on that basis that, that uh, Ms. Johnson felt that she was, she was fearful of Mr. Pierkowski when, you know, all, absent of those things, there's no other indication that he ever went near her or had anything to do with her. Um, he was never even accused of a violation of, 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 of that civil protection order. And the Must only there time be a violation of the first CPO in order to get an extension of it? I, I didn't hear you, Your Honor. Must there be a violation of the civil protective order to enable the petitioner to get the order extended? There does not have to be one um, specifically, although I, I think it counts toward the analysis when you look at the totality of the circumstances. But most importantly, as uh, this court recently ruled, um, this court came out decision two months ago in MH versus JH in 2015-Ohio-5178 uh, that came out in December uh, 2015, in which they quoted Schaffin versus Schaffin, in which there has to be an initial explicit indication that she was in fear of imminent serious physical harm on the date contained in the petition. So basically on the date that she files a petition, she has to show that at that moment in time, she's in fear, that right, she's in danger of serious physical harm. And in the hearing, subsequent hearing, she presented nothing to that effect whatsoever. It's just her own subjective fear based on the fact that he challenged the first civil protection order and then tried to get his money back. And that he, you know, took, they took her to court to get his money back. And so that, um, that is not that there's no that is not a fear of serious physical harm. Uh, Mr. Pierkowski has every right to access the justice system to uh, to make his claims, and there's nothing in the civil protection order that says he's not that he's not allowed to pursue a claim in court against the uh, against the petitioner. And further, this court uh, wrote in M H versus J H two months ago. Said, said that there's no indication from this testimony that MH even believed that JH would act violently toward her if there was no protection order in place. And that's exactly the case here. That Ms. Johnson did not testify in any form or fashion that Mr. Pierkowski would act violently toward her in any way. Again, it's all about you know her subjective point of view, the fact that he took her to court and challenged civil protection order and, and then sued her for the money that, that she took. Um, that she feels that that you know puts her in danger somehow, and um, that's an awfully low standard, and that's and that's way below the legal standard, which is that she has to show that just present some kind of evidence to show that she's in danger of serious physical harm, and she presented nothing, absolutely nothing, and um, you know Mr. Pierkowski moved for a dismissal under Rule 56, Civil Rule 56 after Ms. Johnson presented her testimony and the magistrate denied it and then um, 
Mr. Jeff, Mr. Pierkowski then testified on his own behalf, and then the magistrate still wouldn't uh, deny the petition, and so she grants the petition. So, and it's been a major problem in, this, in Medina County where civil protection orders are being obtained on very, very low standards of proof. And so, um, other than that, there's really not a whole lot else to say. I mean, Ms. Johnson did not present any evidence to show she was under a serious, under a threat of serious physical harm. And also, I might add, even if Mr. Perikowski did commit any acts of domestic violence against her previously, I mean, even assuming that to be the case, which even though in truth it wasn't, that still is not enough to for her to get a second civil protection order. She has to show that on the on the date that she petitioned the court, at that moment in time, she was under uh, under she was in danger of serious physical harm, imminent serious physical harm, and she did not present any evidence to that effect whatsoever. So, if there are any more questions, I don't, I don't really have any much more to say to that. I think the case is fairly straightforward. Okay. Well, thank you, counsel. Thank you. And thank the court you. will. Um, make a written decision that we sent to you on the other side. Thank you. And we'll release it on our website. Thank you so much. The court will be uh, adjourned until